Uh, I'm going to talk about a uh, telemedicine project we've done in India, although I think it would apply to developing regions pretty broadly, and in particular uh, to pretty much any rural area, even rural California. Uh, you'll see why in a minute. Uh, the particular project we did is with the uh, Aravan Eye Hospital, and this is all about eye care to this talk, but there's nothing limited to eye care for the work we're doing. It just happened to be an, an, an eye hospital. Uh, this is in Tamil Nadu, India, which is in one of the main southern states, uh, quite populous, and about five hospitals. And around each hospital, there are some number of rural clinics. And this is a picture of one. I'll get to show you the inside in a minute. Uh, and the basic observation from the hospital is that when they look at their patients, they realize that all their patients are from nearby, right? Which is not that surprising because most of their patients take the bus or walk. And then if you just look at what's the kind of area covered in these states, it's pretty obvious that most patients have no access to eye care. And so they tried a few different things to solve that, and I don't have time to go into all the different things they tried, but the approach that we're trying here is really to put a rural clinic that's convenient for rural villages and use telemedicine, in particular high quality video, so that the doctors can stay in the hospital and then actually do doctor-patient interviews over the video uh, into, directly into these rural villages. Um, and the, the hospital's been focusing on needless blindness is their phrase. Uh, and there is a tremendous amount of need, needless blindness in India, mostly because there simply isn't access to eye care at all. And uh, about 7% of rural Indians, which is on the order of 600 million people, uh, have any access to eye care. This is the inside of the clinic. Um, it's a, this is a different clinic, but same kind of typical layout. It has uh, typically one room, sometimes two, with uh, two pieces of equipment. Let's try the laser pointer. Yes. Uh, there's the, the slit eye lamp, and then there's the PC with a microphone and a webcam. Uh, there is one to two people that work in the clinic. It depends a little bit on the, the, the throughput. Uh, typical group, it might be something like 30 patients a day, maybe up as high as 60. Um, the, this woman is the uh, kind of nurse, although nurse in the loose sense, she's had about three to six months of training in eye care. So she's not a registered nurse. She doesn't know about, for example, anatomy. But she does know uh, to recognize certain things like glaucoma and cataracts. Uh, she knows how to, she's the pharmacist, so she can dispense medicine at the doctor's direction, and she's also the administer, administrator. This is one of the hospitals, this is the Taney Hospital, and then these are actually wireless links that we've put in, which I'll talk about in a minute, but then these are actually villages that now have these rural centers. And, um, so basically, we've expanded the kind of the coverage of this hospital from being just around here to being essentially this, the whole population of this area. And that's really the trick to this. The, by the way, the, an in, the official Indian Medical Association approach to this is that it's supposed to be a doctor in every one of these villages for every specialty, right? Which is completely unrealistic. Uh, it's a good way to raise money if you're the doctors <laughs> and you'd like to have more money. But as providing health care, it's completely unrealistic. So what we're doing here is the doctors are essentially staying in this location and we're trying to essentially multiplex access to the doctors using technology in whatever way is most effective. The technical contribution we made was actually to get Wi-Fi, the same that's in the hot spots you would find at Starbucks or in this room, there's one right there, uh, to go very long distances. So instead of going 100 meters, go 100,000 meters, right? So orders of magnitude farther. This is what happens, this red line is regular Wi-Fi and this blue line is tier Wi-Fi. And uh, we've actually tried a bunch of these distances. The green lines are ones we've actually done. So these are all, all the actual real deployments seem to be getting the actual performance. Um, and we just set the world record in uh, Venezuela. Uh, this is a picture of that, pretty nice place. Uh, the way this works, generally speaking, is you have to have line of sight. So this is up in the Andes looking down to a valley that's at sea level. We do that because the earth curves, and if you want to see really far, you actually have to have one end or both ends high in the air. Um, so what I want 
to get from this is this kind of means that anything you can see, we can connect. All right? It's really that simple. And if you can't see it, we can connect it perhaps in multiple hops. Uh, but there's no, you know, the practical limit of this far exceeds the, pr the distance that most rural villages are from an urban center or even from a fiber point. So this means that it's, it's really about with a little careful placement, we can reach anywhere, including perhaps even some you know, remote islands down the road. On the medical side, what I think was interesting about this is this is uh, quite sustainable. And it's sustainable, it turns out, because the costs are low. In particular, because we're using Wi-Fi, uh, really we just have you know, a little Linux router on each end, a passive antenna, a pole, usually. Sometimes we need a tower, but not, we try not to use towers. Um, so it, it's, it's not very dissimilar for actually from that access point again in terms of the actual equipment it needs other than needing to have a, a big antenna. Right? So this is, th these links are much, much cheaper than any other connectivity solution. And in particular, because it's essentially an intranet versus an internet, it means that you can have as much bandwidth as you want without any monthly fee. And so the big practical advantage of this is there is no monthly fee other than whatever it takes to maintain the links and a little bit for electricity, although we can do solar power. The operating cost of the center is about $150 a month. That's mostly the salary of the nurse and also the uh, rent and the electricity. And it turns out, you just do the math, it, it breaks even in about two and a half years, assuming $10,000 for capital, which is actually higher than most centers need. Um, and so what this means is, is that uh, you, don't have, you have to maybe put in a little bit of money to get it started, but there is no ongoing philanthropy here, right? These centers can pay for themselves because their revenue, it turns out, is about uh, $400 a month just charging for glasses and, and exams and glucose tests. Uh, I have the breakdown. I'm not planning to present it. But bottom line is you can cover a huge, there's no reason you can't go to a large number of centers because the, the capital you need for a center is low and you don't need to cover the operating expenses. These are self-sufficient uh, because their operating costs are so low. Now, the patient impact has been pretty phenomenal. Right now we've done about uh, 50,000 patients to date in uh, 13 centers. Uh, by, when I say do a patient, what I mean by that, just to be clear, is 50,000 doctor-patient interviews typically five to seven minutes long. Uh, about 10% of the patients have significant eye care issues uh, that are resolvable. So it turns out of those 50,000 patients, there are 3,000 at least so far that have gone from functionally blind to having functional vision. Right? So uh, that's a very high hit rate and we expect that to continue. And when you grow to the full 50 vision centers, we would expect 50,000 patients per year to have vision that didn't have vision before. Right? And this is just in the one state of Tamil Nadu. Right? And most of this is because the, the, they're, they have things that are easy to fix, usually cataracts, but also certain bad refractive errors like astigmatism that aren't covered by regular glasses, but can be covered by special glasses. So they're things that are easy to fix once they're diagnosed and once the patients know that they can get treatment. Right, so the, the role here really is access to eye care and, and then getting these patients to get treatment. So I'll stop there and just point out that, that this is, uh, it's been great to work with real patients, which computer scientists don't get to do very often. This is guy, is, I um, actually don't know his name, which is part of the way this works, but he had, he's been, uh, he was blind for seven years before he got treatment. And you know, he could have been treated any time in that seven year period had he known that he was treatable. Right? And in fact, he was treated for free because he's poor enough that his care gets subsidized. So all he had to do that whole time was walk to the hospital and they would have treated him there, but he didn't know. Right? So seven years of unnecessary blindness. And he's, he's not alone. <laughs> all right, so I'll stop here and give the mic back, and then we'll uh, switch to uh, come back for questions. <laughs>